name. As a boy, he always knew a sailor he would be, so he studied the law of the sea. Captain of his crew, a brave and vicious man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sun and sky, and his heart would be his guide, a man of valor and pride. The king and queen, their blessings he obtained to carry the flag of Spain. And rain, a strong, courageous man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sails raised high, he searched the great unknown, his quest for adventure, dispelling any fear. A sure, courageous man, Columbus it was he, who sailed to new horizons across the great blue. Dear Bartholomew, yet another setback here in Spain. The Royal Committee did not recommend my proposal for a voyage westward to the Indies. Despite Queen Isabella's assurances, my hopes are fading, but there is another possibility. I've heard that in Portugal, King John II is still interested in such a voyage, notwithstanding the failure of Don Pedro Dulmo's expedition. Dear brother, could you inform the king that Dulmo failed because he took the wrong route? I'd also like you to approach King Henry VII of England and France's King Charles VIII. Christopher? Huh? At least stop to eat. Beatrice, I can't stop work now. The idea of sailing west around the world to the Indies is being taken more seriously. If I don't act quickly, others like Dulmo could steal my plan. I know that, but you'll be no use to anyone totally exhausted. Everyone knows your plan was the first and the best. No one will steal your glory. Dearest. I did need a break, some fresh air. You push yourself too hard, Christopher. Sometimes I worry you'll ruin your health. I'll take more care. Mm. I love spring. Yes, me too. Beatrice? Hmm? Oh, don't mind me, Christopher. I'm a little distracted. Distracted by what? Oh. Beatrice, tell me. Well, it's just that... Oh, Christopher. We're going to have a baby. Hmm? Hmm? A baby? Oh, darling. It'll be born in August. A baby? What wonderful news. <laughs> and what's it going to be? A boy or a girl? <laughs> Christopher, how would I know? Oh, how silly of me. A baby. I couldn't be happier. Hmm. Let's see. Yes, I know what we'll name it. What, already? Yes, we'll name it Ferdinand if it's a boy and Isabella if it's a girl. After the king and queen. How's that? Yes, that's a fine idea. And Beatrice, I, I think there's another matter we should attend to in light of this. Beatrice? I know what you want to say, but don't. But darling, why not? Because I don't want marriage to stand between you and your dream, that's why. I want you to feel free to do whatever you must to make that voyage. And I know you and your sense of responsibility too well. By now I share your dream, and I know that you'll be looked on less favorably if you marry a commoner. Oh, Beatrice, you're, you're sure? Positive. 
The baby will be a symbol of our union. And for me, that will be more than enough. But for you, you need your voyage to complete your happiness. And I will make it for us. Ah, thank you. <gasps> the Royal Seal of Portugal. This letter's from King John himself. Oh, Christopher! <gasps> Christopher! A letter from King John! What, King John? He has written to me? His Majesty King John II hereby consents to receive Christopher Columbus at his convenience to re-examine his plan for a westward voyage to the Indies. Thank the Lord, fortune may smile on me yet. He wants to see you? Yes, and this time he'll listen. Will you leave right away? I owe it to the Queen to wait a short time and see how the war progresses, but then I'll be on my way. Oh. With any luck, I'll be here till the baby's born. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Dear Bartholomew, the war goes well for Spain, eventual victory seems assured. But the campaign will be a long one, so I have obtained permission from the King and Queen to travel to Portugal and meet with King John II. However, they made a point of granting me another payment from the Spanish purse, so how my loyalties will be divided remains to be seen. Still, once the baby's born and the household's back to normal, you'll see me in Portugal. Yours with hope, Christopher. Ha! Beatrice! Oh! A boy, Christopher. We have a son. He's beautiful. Our little Ferdinand. Hmm. <laughs> well, now I have one more supporter. <laughs> there we go, young man. Let's hear a big hello for your father, hmm? Good. Excellent. <laughs> 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 Come here. Oh, here's your mommy. Well, people have always said I take some getting used to. <laughs> Cheer up, he's a wonderful daddy. Mm -hmm. Dear Father, thank you for your letter. I'm very happy to have a little brother. Well, a half-brother. I hope you are all fine. My studies are going very well here at the monastery. Good so far? You misspelled monastery. Oh. <laughs> there now. My dog Lucky has drawn a lot. I play with him whenever I'm not studying. When I grow up, I want to be a sailor too. And then we can sail together all the time, all over the world. I miss you, but I know my studies come first. Love, Diego. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Christopher, you made it to Portugal at last. Bartholomew, it's good to see you. You look well, very well indeed. And so do you. Thank you. But what's all this commotion? What are they celebrating? Oh, dear. You haven't heard, then. Heard? Yes, Bartholomew Diaz has sailed to the southernmost tip of Africa, proving a safe route can be navigated around Africa and up to the Indies. What? Then all this is... A parade in honor of his great feat. I see. So, Diaz finally made it. Yes, he has, Christopher.
Well done. Christopher, I'm sorry. We were just a little too late. Obviously, King John is determined to focus on this new route to the Indies. They even named the stormy tip of Africa the Cape of Good Hope. Hmm. I don't think he'll be very interested in your westward route anymore, I'm afraid. Still, now that I'm here in Lisbon, I'd like to see King John one last time. I'll convince him yet that a westward route to the Indies is vital. Hmm. Well, I'll see what I can do. I'm sorry, Christopher. It's no use. I did my best, but... I see. Thank you, Bartholomew. I'm coming! I'm coming! Diego, hang on! I'm coming! I'm coming! Hang on! Swim, Diego! Swim toward me! I'm here! Christopher, <sighs> never lose hope. I am watching over you. <gasps> Diego's all right. He got to shore. There's land out there, and it's the Indies. I know it is. <laughs> oh, the Indies! We made it, Captain! Hip hip hooray! Help! Please take me aboard! It's Bartholomew Diaz! I won't let him reach the Indies first. Are you all right? You let out a terrible scream. Uh, I... I had a dream. Ah, a dream that became a nightmare. I pray that won't become the story of your life. Well, Bartholomew, with no hope in Portugal and still nothing definite in Spain, perhaps it's time to try my luck elsewhere. Elsewhere? That's right. I wrote you about trying England and France. I think we should start with King Henry VII in England. Bartholomew, would you be willing to go to England as my emissary and present my plan to the court? Of course, and you just might succeed. King Henry's very keen on exploration. Do you have connections there? Yes, some. I often get orders from England for my charts, and a few of my clients are very influential. I could even go and work there for a while. How's that sound? Grand. How can I thank you for all you've done? I'm glad to help, and if England doesn't work out, I'll go to France. Leave it to me. Excellent. Can I help with your expenses? No, you keep your money. As I say, I'll try to find work there. 
and I have enough set aside that I'll be fine. Business has been good, and I'm well established as a chart maker. But what will you do? Go back to Spain and try one last time to see if the Duke of Medina Celli can help. And who knows, if the war goes well, perhaps the Queen will make things happen. A sound plan, but don't overdo it. Promise me. Promise. <laughs> Safe home, Christopher. I'll leave for England as soon as possible. Thank you, Bartholomew. Goodbye. Amazing. Portugal found an eastward route around Africa to the Indies and will try to make it all the way. You know, this will be quite a blow to Spanish trade. Once that route's been charted, they'll get all the trade with the Indies. But that's just it, Your Grace. If I can open up a westward route, Spain will get that trade because I'm convinced my route is shorter and easier. But we must act fast, sir, before a Portuguese route is firmly established. There must be some action we can take. I wish there was, Columbus, but my hands are tied. Because your plan is under consideration by the king and queen, it is now a potential sovereign enterprise, and as a private citizen, I can't help you no matter how much I'd like to. But if it's any comfort, I still believe in your plan as much as I ever did. Thank you, Your Grace. It is a comfort, but since the Talavera Committee rejected it, doesn't that leave you or anyone else free to support me? Surely people know how close my project came. Won't that count in my favor? Perhaps, but not enough. You still receive money from the royal purse. As long as that is the case, no Spaniard can intervene. I'm sorry. But wait. You're from Genoa, aren't you? There are many wealthy men there. Men who know the sea and made their fortunes in trade. Why don't you try your luck there? Genoa's no longer the trade center it was. And though there are still wealthy men there, they are financiers and bankers rather than men of the sea. When an expedition is organized, they'll lend the money but they won't sponsor it. Ah, Christopher Columbus and the Duke of Medina Celli. What an unexpected pleasure. <laughs> uh, Father Marchena, it's wonderful to see you. Poor Columbus is having no luck at all, Father, I'm sad to say. It's a shame. But I suppose the king and queen have problems of their own. What with this terrible war, funds for exploration are scarce. Mm. True, but they must be found, not only for reasons of trade, but for our religion. I know that you believe in the theories of the great theologian Pierre Dailly, who claims that the world will end in 160 years. And? And if we are to accomplish the task set for us by the prophets, namely to spread the gospel to the four corners of the world, there's no time to lose. We must offer the gift of everlasting life to all peoples, including those of the Indies. Well said, my son. In fact, I've discussed this with Father Perez. It is our duty to spread the true faith, and we both feel that you may be the man the Lord sent to accomplish that duty for the unenlightened souls of the Indies. Thank you, Father. I am deeply honored by your faith in me and my quest, and we must act fast for another reason. Our Catholic faith is under siege here and elsewhere by the Moorish infidel. That's why this war is raging through our land right now, but once we've converted the rest of the world to the true faith, our enemies here must follow. When I think of the lives lost daily over their stubbornness, I ache to be on my way. I know how you feel. And I think you should say all this to the Queen. Like yourself, she's a deeply pious person. I think if she heard his religious motives, that she might give you the support you've awaited so long. Hmm, I know the difficulties, but let me speak with the Queen and see what I can arrange. I'd see the Queen gladly, Father. August, 1489. Dear Beatrice, I have arrived in Hyen to see Queen Isabella. I pray fortune may smile on me here at long last. We meet again. Welcome. Your Highness, where is King Ferdinand? His Majesty is at the front, where he is directing the siege of Baeza. If it goes well, the Moors will soon be driven from Spain. I am glad you're here. <sighs> I have not forgotten you. Not at all, Senor Columbus. I am as anxious as you are to have your plan go forward, both for the glory of Spain and the glory of God. Yesterday I spoke with Father Marchena. I was impressed by what he told me of your religious reasons for going. 
Your Highness, I know that you are waging this war on behalf of all Catholics in defense of Christ and his word. Now I, on behalf of all Catholics, want to win the souls of the Indies and spread the holy gospel to those in need before it's too late, and I pray that Spain will use the wealth I bring back for the reconquest of Jerusalem. An admirable aim, indeed. And believe me, I share your eagerness to set sail at once. But we are in no position yet to grant your wish. When Granada falls, we will do all we can for you. Highness? Dearest Bartholomew, my hopes are high once more. Last August, I saw the Queen. She promised to do all she could when Granada falls. And since then, Biafra has fallen, then Almeria, and many more. Onward to the town! The fighting has been fierce, but there is little doubt of the final outcome. The infidel will be driven from Spain, and at long last, I will make my voyage west to the Indies with the blessing of King, Queen, and the Church. But Bartholomew, continue your efforts in England. We lose nothing by nurturing every possibility. The politics of power can change things so rapidly, we must look beyond Europe, look to the world, and work without pause to make our glorious dream a reality.